let me tell you a story. This is a busy time in the life of our church. You tried to warn me, Nicole, you tried to prep me, but with extended Advent, there is so much going on in the midst of everything we are doing to prepare. The calendar has turned. It is now December. There is no avoid. We have been in Advent for a year and a half, but we are finally in the month of Christmas. <laughs> Three weeks from now, we will celebrate the birth of the Christ child in beautiful and profound ways. But as we have tried to be innovative in how we will reach the families of our church and our community, we have come up with some innovative opportunities for Christmas. Because this is one of those absolutely chaotic years in the life of a pastor where Christmas falls on a Sunday. And so that means that Christmas Sunday morning you have the opportunity to wake up and worship in your pajamas at your home at 9 o'clock with the streamed worship service that we have already begun putting together for our church. Or you can come at 1 o'clock and gather for a more intimate gathering here in this place. But what that means is, on the last day of November, Pastor Andy preached a Christmas sermon. Now, I don't have a checkbook. I probably won't write 2023 on much, but I've preached my first 2023 sermon. Want to know why? Because we have a very similar model for the New Year's, which is four Sundays from now. We'll stream at nine. You can worship at your homes or wherever you might be, or you can gather at 10 o'clock for an intimate gathering here in our worship center, all in an attempt to tell God's story in a good way. Worship planning this last week involved trying to hammer out the details for not one, not two, not three, but four Christmas Eve services with all of the juggling of what will make this time special. And then, oh, by the way, the finance committee would like me to remind you that pledges are still being received and there are pledge cards in the pew back before you. This is a busy season. And in the midst of that, I hope that God shows up for busy, anxious people. So much so that for years now, I've imagined a little guardian angel for me. I call him Alexis the Anxious Angel. Because Gabriel does a good job of proclamations to Mary, to Joseph, to Zechariah. The angel that we'll talk about in the Welkins, in the heavens, who sings God praises and stories, the angelic choir, all of these things that have to go right for that first Christmas night and its story, I am certain requires somebody whose job it is to worry about the details. And so Alexis the anxious angle, angel, he's in charge of things like tuning up the angelic choir, making sure there are no notes out of place buffing the glory of God so it shines just perfect in the Christmas sky, making sure Gabriel makes it to the right person in the right dream at the right time so that the wrong young woman somewhere else doesn't get God's message. I need an Alexis that helps me realize that God comes in the midst of busyness, in the midst of my exhaustion, in the midst of my worry. Because we have been preparing ourselves around the theme of story and the story of Christmas. Our first week we talked about the Christmas story in a big way from the Gospel of John. We talked about the Word, the Logos, the love, the life of God coming from that which is big, heaven-bound, and being made intimate and incarnate in the Christ child. The second week we talked about the world story as a way of honoring that our extended Advent draws us into the Christmas season even earlier, but to appreciate that we're still not doing it near as early as the world that surrounds us with Starbucks cups and the decorations that go up in stores. In some ways, the church falls behind. And so we talked about the world story of Christmas, but we offered a, a remedy, a tonic, if you will, of holding a tension in the Christian heart between seeing these as holy days or just busy holidays. Last week, we were blessed with Reverend Camille talking to us about God's story at Christmas with the reminder that for God, this is a love story, not just because it involves a birth, but because it is rooted in the great promise that because God loves this world, he sends the Son to us. It is love that moves the Christmas story forward. And today, my friends, I want to talk about your story at Christmas. Now, there are some in the room who may say, my story at Christmas? I, uh, do you mean, like, when I open presents? No, 
What is your story, your place in the story this Christmas? So you might then say, I, don't, I come to this experience to know God's story, to hear the texts again and again, to sing the songs familiar and new, to be shaped in the story of Christmas. What is my story at Christmas? The bold claim I want to make this morning, church, is that God will use you and your story this Christmas. And that's not because there's something unique about 2022. There's not something special about this time or this place. I've been saying this for years. God uses you and your story every year at Christmas. And you might say, well, my story isn't very pretty right now. It's not very good. I'm in the middle of heartbreak, job transition, major change, deep struggle. I'm worried about buying presents and those we have to put off till the next paycheck clears or whether or not we're going to be able to give anything at all. I'm, I'm worried about what next year is going to hold. I'm worried about the people that I know that are sick with COVID and a cough and the flu. I'm worried about so many things. My story is not perfect. So surely it's not the one you mean. And I say to you, yes. God's even using our imperfect stories this Christmas. Because God sends angelic storytellers to imperfect people that their world meet, might be transformed. Let's take a look at the story of peace from Luke chapter 2. Starts in verse 8. In that region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace among all with whom God is well pleased. And the angels went away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is a story of angels we have heard on high. They are the divine storytellers. Their story is based on their conviction, for at this point in the narrative, they know more than anybody else in the terrestrial plane. They have been privy to the work of God and what is happening on that night, and so they can't help but come forward and share a good news, to sing about it, to glow with the glory of God. Their story is compelling. It shapes the whole world. And the thing to remember, in a time and a season where we are seeing a resurgence of conversations about anti-Semitism, about conversations about Nazism, its place in our history and in our reality, we need to remember that this message of hope and possibility comes to poor, vulnerable, working class, faithful Jewish men. The first people that God's storytellers approach with good news of great joy for everybody, including us some 2,000 years later, are shepherds in the field. How do we know they're faithful, though? Well, because the first thing they do when they see the glory of God is fear. They have an appreciation that from their faith it suggests that to see God in a real way could in fact be dangerous to them. So when the angel appears, they think that's it. Pack it in, boys. We've had enough. This is our end. And instead, the angel offers hope and possibility. But I understand that fear. I get it. Because I know in different parts in my life and certainly in conversations that I've had with other faithful people, oftentimes the invitation to new life and discipleship is met with this. Yes, I will follow you, Jesus, but only to the end of my block. I'm not all in, but I'm in. I'll follow you as far as I can see. 
as far as I can reach and feel and know and trust. I bring no vulnerability to the table. I accept no risk. But I'll follow you, but only to the end of my block. That's a spiritual fear response that says it's difficult for me to trust in a God that I cannot fully see, embrace, or understand. And the angel's first words honor that struggle. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. That is a refrain that comes up again in the angelic greetings to Zechariah, Joseph, and Mary. It is ripe throughout the Hebrew scriptures of people encountering God and is one of my favorite refrains throughout this season. John Michael Talbot is a Catholic Christian songwriter and he wrote a song entitled Be Not Afraid. And it It's the kind of song that this time of year, every time I pick up my acoustic guitar, I just start to noodle on and play. It tells a narrative of God at work in the lives of a variety of people from scriptures, but it is that chorus that I keep coming back to. Be not afraid, I go before you always, come follow me and I will give you rest. That is a message that an anxious Andy needs every Christmas. Be not afraid. Follow me. Why? Because what I bring is a message of good news of great joy, says the angel. And it's not just for you. Well, it is for you. And you have a story to tell and a place to to move in this story that is moving forward. But it's not just for you. It is, in fact, for all. And what is offered in the message of the glory of God is peace. Peace among all with whom God is well pleased. The blessing of peace settles in in the midst of their fear, in the midst of their struggle, in the sense by which they are cast aside, unknown and judged. It is upon them that God's angels tell a story of peace and possibility. God has not forgotten you. So let me ask you, church, where does December find you? Where's December finding you this year? Are you in a bit of fear right now? Do you carry that worry and anxiety about the news you see or what's going on in your family life or in your social media connections? Do you have a bit of wonder about what God is doing or what might be possible for those in need of health and healing? Are you perhaps caught up in the hustle and bustle of things, rushing around through the busyness of the season, always trying to make sure things are perfect and just right, whether you're hosting or traveling or anything else that might be going on in the Christmas season, you need it to fall into place just right, or you feel like you are out of control, maybe Alexis the anxious angel is at the wheel for you. Do you come to December finding yourself feeling confident, prepared, knowing that God is at work in your story? You've done all that you need to do to accomplish and and meet the needs of your family, of yourself, and of your world. Does December find you needing peace to hear a story of hope and love and possibility? If that's you like it is me, that December comes to us with the need to find a little peace, I want to offer just a couple of thoughts and possibilities. One is an expression of gratitude. Our office is just plum full of your generosity for those of you that have brought gifts, direct gifts for the Family Promise uh, and Bowman kids as a part of this celebration this season. If you're still looking for a way to experience some peace, possibility, a bit of the fear and wonder of the season, I do know that we still need some general gifts for this Saturday's Cocoa with Santa. And the magic and the mystery of that is that that's going to be an opportunity for us to be providential to families with way more need than I'll ever fully know. See, one of the things that I get to enjoy every Christmas is picking out the right gift for my family for my kids, for my parents. 
Maybe that's a part of your generational practice that you just enjoy finding the right thing for people that you care about. Well, we get to help do that for people with less. To provide a market in our hall where parents can go and pick out the specific items that speak to them for their families and their children's need. It is an offering of peace and possibility. And for everybody in this room that's a parent, we know that experience of finding the right gift for our children. I'm so grateful we get to be a part of that this Saturday. Maybe if you're longing for peace, it's not because things are unsettled. It's because you're deeply grieved. This has been a year where you have known loss to death, to circumstance, to the economy, to illness. Maybe to find some peace, what you don't need is light and joy to the world and noise, but a little bit of centering that says the angel's message of peace for me is one of comfort. Because if I'm a part of God's all the earth, if I am one in whom God is well pleased, surely in the midst of my grief and my fears, there ought to be comfort, there ought to be peace. Our blue Christmas service on December 19th is intended to offer just that. Friends, we're all on a common journey to Christmas together. Christmas is a time for telling your story. It's a chance this year for you to be not just the shepherds in the field, not just the confused young girl at the manger's edge, not the family looking for a place with an open door. This is a chance for us to be a part of the angelic chorus that tells the story of God's good news, not just for one other person, but for all that God has come to offer us peace in this season. As you tell your story, as you seek peace in this season, it is a chance for us to experience glimpses of the holy, to touch what is possible by God's providence. When we are feeling scared, when we are feeling scarred, when we are feeling scarce, God is enough. God's peace is sufficient. And we are simply invited to be a part of telling that great story of Christmas. Would you join me in a moment of prayer?